Hello, uh, I'm in the shed again. I'm on another project at the moment. This is my latest little project. It's um, a Francis Burnett frame, uh, James Francis Burnett engine, some forks where I don't know what they're after the forks, some are Japanese I think. Um, I'm just building it up from, from bits and pieces. I, I started off with the engine, it was seized. Uh, I've, I've done that and I put in the frame. Uh, with the carburetor that come with it is this this carburetor. It's a big um, big animal carb, and this thing's not going for donkey years. And this carburetor is absolutely solid. Now, I don't um, advise doing this, but <laughs> I can't. Well, I mean, solid this thing. Uh, it's not tightened up in the vice, obviously. <coughs> this thing's it's not been moved or useless. But it looks like it's been a chicken shed or something. So the object of this little video is I'm going to try and attempt to show you how to get this thing apart without butchering it. Because it's tight. This is tight. So I've done this before on, on bikes. Whether it's going to work on this one or not, I don't know. But... Um, the idea is, is instead of just trying to butcher it off with those big um, slip joints, is put it in boiling water. Leave it in boiling water and let it get hot and then see if it comes to pieces. So I'm going to have a go at that and if it's successful I'll put um, a video on YouTube for people, amateur mechanics, to, uh, to show you what, what you can do. I'll, I'll uh, put another video on in a second. Right, the idea is of uh, submerging it in, um, in some boiling water, well it's not boiling water, it's hot water to the tap. Uh, just get it nice and warm to start with, as so hot as my tap will get that, it's quite, quite hot. So that's going to heat the carburetor up to a point, but it's not going to be hot enough. Because what I'm going to do now is boil the kettle and then empty some of that water out and then pour some boiling water over it. Don't pull the boiling water over straight away because the carburetor will warm up and protect some of the heat out. So by doing this, that hot water will have heated the carburetor up to a certain amount and it will be, when I pull the boiling water on it will not take as much heat out of the water. So, so let's look at that. Uh, so then I've got the carburetor is nice and hot now, I've took the water out and I'm going to put boiling water over the top of it now. So the idea is this is going to expand all this aluminium to a point where things should come cut loose. This will be tight but it'll, uh, it'll, it should be a lot better than what it was. So what I'll do is now I'll take this back in the shed and put it back in the vise and see if I can get the top off. Right, it's, uh, you might just be able to sit still steaming so I've just pulled it out of, out of the boiling water with slip joints and I've just um, boiling water. I've just put it in the vise now I've put it in the vice and it's not tight that vice, it's just stopping it from twisting. Now that is it's quite quite warm that I'm gonna try and take the top off. Right. I'm trying to do this one-handed. It has just moved very, very slightly. So I'm gonna try and move it back again. It's just just moving very slightly. Now, I'm not trying to butcher this thing, I'm not trying to force it off. I'm trying to work one handed with the camera. Uh, it 
it tastes turning but uh, it's very very slight so I might have to resort to something a bit hotter I'm gonna warm it up using this don't like doing this but uh, you have to do what you have to do sometimes I'm not going to overdo it just going to warm it up with the matte gas just enough to uh, get that top ring moving close to this matte gas it will melt the damn thing to it's quite, quite, quite powerful it. give it another try right it's so much gone I don't know I don't know if I've damaged it a lot but hot hot and hot hot I don't know if I've damaged it or not though but you have to do what you have to do sometimes it's so much moved springing I might have got away with it I'm not sure can't see it See anything broken anyway? Anyway, I'll have, have a look in a minute. I'll go back on again. Right, still to this. I push it back in the boiling water. I'm going to see if I can pull the slide out now because that will be tight. So I put it in boiling water again. That sits in that same bucket. I just took it out. It's still steaming. Let's see how tight that is. Piece of the old cable still stuck in there, it's just been snapped off. That's it, it's moving. See, it's a little bit of, uh, a bit of wet stuff in. Not much in there. It's wet. I think that's salvageable that, <laughs> even needle leaks are right. Surprising, put it back in boiling water. So that's how you get them out. I mean if you don't put them in hot water these things can be so tight you can actually just bust the whole thing just trying to get it to pieces. So just a bit of a tip for anybody who's doing a care better. That care better's probably been like that for 50 years. Another appear inside of this uh, float ball. I like, instead of using a screwdriver, I like to use these um, little uh, quarter inch drives with a screwdriver because you can push down and get a oh, famous last words. There. Without chewing the heads off, you can get a nice short push on it push all your weight on and use the lever don't look a bit workshop it's like a tip I'm not the tidiest worker it will
Sorry, what went on there again? Hold the camera. Got a little leak inside of here. And then we'll not be so far off uh, in bits then. Lucky these have come out so easy. And, uh, it's a bit of a... I suspect we're in these could have been... Uh, so tight they could have stripped off but they've uh, probably put them in the boiling water has loosened them so it just expands all the aluminium that little tiny bit God wants cleaning out this. That's a bit dirty. Not like salvageable though. So this looks salvageable. Space, a little space, it always gets lost. That goes on top of that pin. Then. Some pointed nose pliers. So there we are, it's, uh, it's in bits, well do you know, I'll, get a, I'll put some petrol in this and soak it in petrol for a day or two, let get um, get to everything, but to be honest everything seems to be alright, so, a bit of cleaning, some new gaskets and uh, I think we'll be away, but that, that's how you take them to bits, don't go hand fisted and just try and butcher everything off, just try and take your time. Okay. Uh, I'll stay here on the, uh, working on the carburetor again, uh, just a bit more from when I um, <coughs> dismantled it. And uh, I put it in the dishwasher and uh, give it a good clean in the dishwasher. It's <laughs> done it really, really good. It's uh, quite pleased with it. But uh, one thing I found is um, this flange here is distorted it's quite bad as well I've seen this before in animal carburetors and if you're not aware of it you can this 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 fault can can drive you insane see the uh, the surface there if I put a straight edge across it look how much that's distorted it's got to be It's got to be 20, 25 third distortion there. Now, there is an O-ring that fits on on the surface there. That O-ring fits in there. There's no way that that O-ring is going to seat when you, when you fasten it on to the, um, to, the, to the intake manifold. There's no way that's going to seat on there. So what you're going to do is get air uh, being drawn in at this point so it'll just run weak all the time and it's amazing how this curb has ever worked being so bad I just can't understand it ever working but it did have a very very thick gasket on 
And I'm just wondering if somebody kind of half diagnosed it and fitted a, a gasket on that would compress. But uh, you can actually visibly see this side is distorted. It's bent up. Somebody's over tightened it. So we've got to get that flat before we do anything else. So what I'm going to do is going to file it. I mean, it's not a great idea, but uh, it's not a great thing to do. But I'm going to get a file, draw a file across there until it's flat and then put it on a, a sheet of um, wet and dry on a flat surface and then make sure this surface is flat and then I'll assemble the carburetor. Okay, <coughs> I've took some uh, filed some material off these two areas here because in the sense it's not it's not bent here because because these are sticking out and they're a lot flimsier than the rest of the carburetor it's quite solid there. These have bent forward when it, when it's been over tightened it's distorted these two areas. So looking at it sideways on, looking at the the carburetor that way on, exaggerated, just like that. So it's pretty flat between the and there and that's where the o-ring sits but it's been over tightened so these two have, have distorted like that so you don't need to file this bit that's that's flat all you have to do is take it off the like that file those, those two ends off until that's flat because there's an o-ring fits in this groove here which will take a little bit of uh, distortion out of it but you need to get it reasonable to start with and I've got this now fairly reasonable um, let's see if I can put the straight edge on it I put some tissue in the centre is to keep the aluminium out but putting that on there now it's um, it's had a lot better than what it was. Okay, it's really difficult to see. Right, so what, what I do now is to make sure that it's flat. You want a flat surface. So what I've got here is a glass chopping board and this is this is a flat surface. On top of the glass chopping board I'm going to put some wet and dry. 180, 180 grit. And on the surface of this now is I'm going to put some marker pen. I'm going to coat that with black marker pen. Now I'm not really bothered about these outside parts here because these don't seal. That that's the sealing ring there. So if I can get that flat, I've got a good chance this this o ring's going to seat. I, I think it'll seat now before I do this, but. Uh, just to double check there's no really bad eye spots in if you just coat that with some marker pen and then put it put it face down on this wet and dry Let's see if I can show you what I'm doing here put it face down on the wet and dry Keep it nice and flat and keeping it flat. You'll be able to see where, where it's low. Now, it's not taking the uh, marker pen off right at the top. So it, this part right at the top, it still appears to be a little bit, a bit low. So it's still, it's taking stuff off here and there, but not here. But if I keep doing that until all that marker pen's gone, then that should be a reasonable about surface. I don't think we're too far off here because it's just it's just starting to take the marker pen off there. But I'll, I'll keep doing it. Right, I've uh, continued to just rub it on this 
wet and dry you can see now that all that surface inside there is shiny all the way around and that's shiny all the way around so that means this surface on the inside here is reasonably flat so we're not concerned about this outside bit here if that side's a little bit low that's fine it's that bit we want so that's shiny all the way around and that's shiny all the way around so that means them surfaces are flat so when we put new o-ring in there that o-ring will now seal against the uh, the inlet on the head I'm quite confident that's okay so that's that's what we're looking for right here's um, a bit of a diagram I'll explain how carburetors work <coughs> oh in any particular case an animal carburetor uh, a monoblock but all carburetors tend to be very similar they all, they all the primary function is to mix fuel and air into the engine and um, they all they, that's all they do they all do it slightly differently but they all got to mix fuel and air together so basically what you've got here and i've done a little drawing is it's um let's get the right way around that's the carburetor and that's a re drawing a representation of that just to make it a little bit easier to to follow <clears throat> so basically what you've got is the components inside this is this is the main body of the carburetor so this this bit here all this bit at the bottom is all that bit big, just a big lump of aluminium with holes in it inside there you've got this slide that's the slide and that's the needle and that's the main jet and that's the pilot jet so that's the slide with the needle that's the representation of that and that's the main jet right so what happens is the slide's got a, got a cut out here you can see it's got a slightly chamfered part on it and that chamfered part goes to the intake side like that now if that slide is fully down it blocks off the intake completely so the air can't get from there through to here and the slide is open very slightly so you can get a little bit of air through on takeover this screw here all that does is stop that slide going too far down so on tick over you let get a little bit of air can get through and that screw is that one that silver one now on this one when I tried to undo it it snapped off here so I've had to drill that out so to drill it out up there it's a little brass screw a long place well, quite a long brass screw with a little stop on the end and I've made a new one I've, I've had to drill that and tap it and I made a new stopper in, in the lathe it's only a it's only a screw, it's nothing special. And all that do is you screw that in, it's got a little spring on here. And you screw that in, it touches that slide at the bottom and stops the slide coming too far down. And that sets the, the, the engine speed at tick over. So when you shut the throttle off, it doesn't stop completely. Right. So when you when you go when you set the bike up and you accelerate, what you're doing, your cable, this is your this is your cable coming in from the top here cable the little little nipple on it there lifts this slide up as it lifts the slide up it lifts the needle up and the slide together the needle comes out of the jet now the, the needle has got a taper on it like that you can see it there the needle is tapered as that needle comes out of that jet it allow because it's tapered it allows more fuel to come out the fuel bowl up through this little tiny hole and, and get undrawn into this um, intake chamber intake stream of air that's coming through so as you as you pull the, the slide up the needle is withdrawn from that jet the more you withdraw it the more fuel it lets come up at the same time it's letting more air get through as well 
so the, the, the ratio between the fuel and air is kept at a constant and if you want to, to have more fuel coming through then what you do is raise the needle up by a clip at the top here so you can raise and lower that needle but generally once they're set you never need to you should never need to adjust them right the, the way this thing works is that when you start the engine up when you when you kick the engine over the piston is, is over here in the engine and as the piston goes down in the cylinder it creates a vacuum in the cylinder so there's a vacuum here now because this is all sealed up air can't get in or shouldn't be able to get in past that seal that's what we've just done by making that surface here flat and there's an o-ring in here so that's fastened to the air intake into the engine intake and should be sealed so no air can get in here so when you when the piston goes down it creates a vacuum and there's a vacuum on this side of the carburetor when you get a vacuum the atmospheric pressure outside tries to fill that vacuum and the only way it can get in or should be able to get in is via the air filter so you've got an air filter on the back here so the air comes through the air filter and goes in through the back of the air in, the uh, carburetor intake on the back of the car into you've got a little lip it's, it's slightly slightly curved show you on this one you can see that there's, there's a curve on it it's not a square end and you get what I call a venturi effect as the air goes over this 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 curve the the it tends to speed up the air intake speeds up so the velocity of the air going inside is going faster so as the air goes, is, this is trying to fill this vacuum and the air comes in here it goes, because the slide is lifted it can get through here and go into the engine now as that, as that air is passing over the top of this jet here there's a hole in here, there's fuel at the bottom this is a fuel bowl with petrol in as the air passes over there's a drop in the pressure it acts the same thing as an aeroplane wing when you put when you pass air over the top you get a, when you pass air you get a pressure drop here and you've got atmospheric pressure on the outside shoves fuel up tries to force this fuel level up this jet <coughs> as it comes up it mixes with the air and then it's sucked into the engine that's your fuel air mix that's how you get the fuel mixing with the air it's the atmospheric pressure from the outside is pushing the fuel up that jet the further the slide goes up the further the needle goes up you get more fuel you get more air and that's your air fuel mix and that's how the fuel gets into the engine and all carburetors work on this on the similar or very very same principle as this now if you were to let the thing all this go down and it's all sealed off the engine wouldn't run so you need a tick over you need, you need like a baseline and what you've got here is a pilot jet and that pilot jet there is connected into the bottom of here so there's fuel up there all the time this is never blocked off this is set and you've got an air screw there so even when this is shut off it, the fuel can get up here past that air screw so you get a little tiny amount of fuel of air and f fuel and air can get past here so that the bike will tick over so that's your tick over this works up to a few hundred revs once this once the slide has, has come up any amount after tick over this doesn't work anymore this main jet takes over so that that's your acceleration part now the, the problems with the carburetor is if you've got a if you like there was on this one this was distorted this boss at the front was like that
So the bolts were, it was never going to seal here. So you're going to get air being drawn in here, which is bypassing the carburetor. So the air is going to be weak. The, the mixture is going to be weak. There's been too much air because it's missing the fuel out. And the air is getting in there. So that is always a, a place to check on an ammo carburetor. The other thing around the carburetor is, and these, this is very common, this is a little bit worn, but I've seen a lot worse than this. If this slide here, that slides into the body of the carburetor, that, that should be a very, very good fit. If there's a gap between there, the air can get round the outside. Even when this is down, it still draws air around the outside. And it can still draw fuel up here as well. So you'll, it, what, what you get is it won't tick over. You shut, you shut the res down, the slide drops, but the bike doesn't slow down because there's earth can still get round it. And you get, um, I had one once where it was a, a Triumph T110, and when you shut the revs down, it didn't, it didn't shut down. It took ages for the revs to settle. And basically, what it is, it's the, the fit. The fit of this inside there, it needs to be a really nice fit. And this is okay, it's not fantastic, but it'll work. If, if you can put that in there and rattle it through, it's no good. And you can actually see the word on it, the rubbish these things really. You can see it's all, there's all scores on it, but you see that little mark there, that little, like a U-shaped mark there and there, that's where the fuel, the, the air has been going past the carburetor and it's worn it, so that's what, it's worn the carburetor away, but it's serviceable, it's serviceable, you can just feel, just feel a little tiny step on it. Now if that's worn, if you can put that in there and it can rattle around, then it's not going to work. It'll work, it'll start, it'll run, but it'll not run right. This this carburetor, this slide really is knackered really, but it'll it'll work, it'll be to serve my purpose. You can see all the scratches in it. That's just dirty air that's going through that's worn it away. And the materials are not that fantastic. This is the jet. It fits in the bottom of the carrier so that jet is that one there this jet here screws in the bottom and is that one that is that air screw that screws into there now the the setting for this generally as a base measurement when you fully when you build the car better screw it in and screw it out one and a half turns and that, that's like a baseline setting. It, that generally that works. <clears throat> this is the pilot jet. And that jet screws in the bottom of the... It's a fixed jet. Just got to make sure that... I don't know if you can see it. There's, there's a little hole in the centre there. And if you look down that, you know what we'll be able to see on this camera. But right in that end of it there... There's a very, very tiny hole, so you can take this out of this, this holder. You can unscrew the, the cap off it, you just unscrewed the cap off it there. Now you should, you've got to be able to see, can you see through it? I think you might be able to. Are you gonna... You can. There, you can just just see, just see the white of the paper through it. So you've got to be able to see through that. It is a very very fine hole. And you shouldn't really stick anything down there in case it gets jammed in. But sometimes you have to do what you have to do. And what I do is get a piece of copper wire, get a piece of wire, bit of cable, strip it back, and the little tiny things, the strands of wire. You can get them down there and clean that out. You can just see, you can see the, the white of the paper. Right, and that screws. Can't 
what one on the big end. That screws on there, so that, that screws in the bottom, then the cap goes on the bottom, and that's it, it's, that's fixed forever. Um, what else have we got? Oh, okay, here we are. This is the uh, <clears throat> this is the float mechanism and the valve that controls the amount of fuel that's in the carburetor. So what we're looking at here is the this screws into the right. So let's get another piece of paper. So what you, what you've got is control this. This is your float chamber. This is your floor chamber. So that is a representation. That is a representation of that. And your fuel comes down your fuel pipe into this this banjo fitting. There's a filter inside here, which is that little top hat goes on top of there like that. So the fuel is filtered at that point. So the fuel comes in here, goes through the filter, then comes out down this hole here, at the bottom. At the bottom of that hole, there's a slight taper. There. That is your fuel valve. That fuel valve has got a point on it. It's a little plastic valve, like a little bullet. And as that, as the fuel comes out, it comes out of this hole here. Now if that, this little bullet, this little valve is stuck in there, the fuel can't come out. So as that valve drops down, as it comes down, it allows fuel to come out there. Now this doesn't move a long way, it doesn't go up and down and up and down, it moves at just a few thousandths of an inch. As the, as the engine's running, the float inside here, let me see if I can draw this now, this valve, this is, I guess there's a new representation of this, you've got, you've got a float in here. Um, that's, this is the float. And this pivots and as the, as the float rises, as the float rises up, it pushes up on that valve and shuts the fuel off. As the, as the fuel level drops in the fuel bowl, this is the fuel bowl there, as the fuel level drops, that float drops the valve follows it down and fuel can come out. When, the, when, when this fuel bowl is full, or getting near full, this float rises up, pushes that valve onto that seat and stops the fuel coming out. So this valve doesn't go up and down, up and down, up and down. When it's running, <coughs> it's a couple of thousandths off the seat. So as it's using fuel, it's replacing it. So it hardly moves at all. People tend to think this valve goes up and down, you know, you empty the bowl and it fills it like switching the tampon off. It's not. Think of that as the tap being dripping, as it just dripping out all the time. Because as it's, as it's dropping, it's topping it up. And 
it doesn't move a great lot. And what you get on a lot of, a lot of engines after they've been stood for a long time, you get fuel leaking, you've got an overflow, usually around about, I don't know where they are, it could be anywhere, it could be up here, something like that. So when it went, it could be like here. So when the fuel gets too much in, the fuel runs out on the floor and you get, get dripping on the floor. Which means that this, this float hasn't switched off. It's either the valve's stuck or something's happened here, or the float's punctured and it's not working. And it's not switched the fuel off. The fuel level's got up to a level where it started to leak out there. You can strip them down and not find anything wrong with them. And you, I find this a lot on the on Japanese carburetors. I don't know why on Japanese carburetors you don't tend to find it much on animals, but on on the uh, Mikunis or whatever they call it, or Kethins or whatever, you find that they tend to leak fuel. And I, I think I know what it, I think I know what it is. People say, oh, it's the valve, replace the valve. I've had these bits on these carburetors and they're perfect. There's no, nothing wrong with them. And when you test them, when they're off the, off the bike, they're fine. Put them on the bike and they leak. What happens, I think, is you've got the fuel valve, which is, and they all look very, very similar, these valves. Got like that. On the fuel, let's see if I can draw this properly. float would be something like that and it has a little ledge on it there and it pivots here it's, it's something similar right so when it's in that position this little plate here is pushing vertically up at right angles to that valve so as i said before it doesn't move very far at all it, it, it can only comes off a few thousand so fuel drips out and fills the fuel bowl up Right, so if this fuel bowl is empty, this here ends up in this position. Right, because the fuel bowl is empty, this is rotated down, pivoted around that point. The, the float is rotated back, and this ends up there, and this float ends up here. Now you can see the handle between that and that. It's different between that and that. So what you're getting now is as this rises, instead of it pushing straight up, it's pushing sideways. That's pushing that valve over that way. And any friction here, it's going to jam. And I think on all carburetors, that's what happens is, if you can get fuel in it and get it, get some fuel in the bowl and get the float back to that position, they tend to stop leaking. It's when they're empty. When the bike's been left for a long time, the fuel has evaporated, the floats drop down, fuel's leaking out here, it's filling the bowl up. This comes and hits the valve and it gets stuck there because it's the, the handle's wrong. It's, it's shoving it to the wrong handle. And I think that's a lot of the problems. You can obviously get the the valves tight in, in the uh, inside here because that, that this um, this valve here goes up inside that all there like that now if that's if that's tight at all because this thing's got to be really nice 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 and free to move if that's tight at all in there it's not going to work so you can get it tight in there it can be dirty or what you get a bit of muck under the end of it or whatever all that will contribute to it flooding but I think a lot of the problems is, is when that's coming out into that position and the float's pushing it, it's pushing it over like that and it can't go back in. See? It's like that. If you straighten it up, straighten the valve up. Try and put one under to get my hold the camera. Once you get the valve in the right position, nice and free but if it comes out too far and it gets a little bit off like that it's sticky it's, run, it's running up the side and that's that's all and it, it takes literally similar to nothing to just make that valve stick 
The other problem is with floated. I've never had one myself, but I've heard of people say that these can get punctured. And obviously if they don't float, it's not going to rise and fall. It sticks to the bottom, but personally I've never had one. I've never, never had one. That's the little platform we're talking about. You can see at the bottom there's a little, little plate there. That's the, that, that there is the platform. That is that platform there. That just pushes up on that nylon valve. Shuts the fuel off. So basically that's how carburetors work. A lot of people see this. They're not complicated. It's, there's no great mystery to it. They've been around for, for, for donkey's years. And they all work on a very, very similar basis. Right, I can stick this thing back together now. And if there's anything else interesting, I'll put it on. There's something else I didn't show you. <clears throat> this is the main jet. This jet fits in the bottom of there. Okay. And then you've got the main jet. So this, this unit here. That and this, this needle fits in there like that. So when you accelerate, it goes in and out like that. That's where your fuel's coming from. So the because that's tape, this needle's tapered. You see a little taper on to the bottom. The more it comes out of the jet, the more fuel can come past it. And that's where you get your difference in your speed from and there, there is your cutout on the back so as the as the needle rises the slide comes up at the same time so the relationship between the fuel and the air is maintained the same so you have to make sure that this is not bent or dirty or whatever so that's another thing you can get so this this is the this is where all the fuel is sucked out all the fuel starts up in the bottom the fuel not difficult to see this is the fuel bowl so the petrol comes in through that hole fills this chamber up obviously the fuel runs to the bottom which is the bottom of the and then this jet is screwed in the bottom so all the fuel goes up through that up to the jet up into the slide which is this part and then it's mixed it's mixed with the goes up through that jet there and it's mixed with the air that's coming through and that gives you a mixture your own mixture okay right, I bought a a set of uh, gaskets and o-rings and whatever for it and I'm pretty sure is when all these got new gaskets on I think this this car rest will be fine and the state it was in when I started is quite incredible really so this is a new gasket set I bought for it just put a new gasket new uh, fiber washer on the bottom of the main jet holder right you can see the float valve, I think you can see it inside there. Let's see if I put this down. You see, you can see the float valve. That's the float valve, the little yellow, little yellow part there with the pins touching. And if you watch that valve, I don't know if you can be able to see this or not, but as the float comes up and when when the floats in the up position as the as the fuel goes down in the floor it, it hardly moves it only moves like that but when the floor when this float shape is empty this will come down to that position so when the floor drops when the needle drops down it's just a bit of a daft handle now, this is not too bad on ammo, we're on some of these Japanese carriers I've seen, there's quite a lot of movement. And what happens is, that handle gets wrong there, instead of it pushing the, floor, the needle up, it pushes it sideways. 
Well, once they're full of fuel and they're running, they're all right. It's when they're empty. But that needs to be able to drop under its own weight like that. Like that. Can't be tight at all. So if that's always something to, to check on an old carburetor. Right, this is the uh, carburetor back into one piece. It's dirty yet on the outside. The inside's clean. The outside's dirty. I'll strip it down and give it a good clean and polishing and what have you. Make it look pretty. Not with any better. Um, quite happy. This is this will this will be a functioning <coughs> carburetor now. You can see inside there, uh, but you see the needle rising and on this slide at the same time. Nice and that's what you want, you want it nice and free like that. All I'm doing is pulling at that cable. And the slide slides up and down. Now the amount that that, that gap there is controlled by that screw. So if I screw that screw out, that closes and that's the tick over. So as I unscrew this screw, that'll, that'll shut down. Sh shuts the amount of air going under there, which controls the, the speed on takeover. Now, as I was saying before, is one of the big problems with ammo carburetors is, as I can show you now, is this slide is, gets worn in, in the barrel. And I can't show you, it's too... just a little moving a little tiny bit but if that's flopping about in there if you can rattle that round in there it's no good you'll never get it run properly but that carburetor is oh that, that, that's one i didn't show you before this is um what they quaintly call a titler all that is is a pin that goes inside here and shoves on the float so the float comes up shoves the fuel off via that fuel valve there and for coal starting, what they used to do was flood the engine with petrol, give it extra fuel. So what they do is just, that just pushes down, pushes the float down, and it floods out and the fuel comes out everywhere. You know that the carburetor's full of petrol. They don't do that today. They, 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 this wouldn't be allowed to have fuel coming out on, on a carburetor. And on these, they didn't do it on some of these as well, because if you notice in the top there's an extra hole, nothing in it this is where the cable is in for the accelerator but inside there you can have another slide and what the other slide does is shuts off this air completely inside another, another slide inside that slide operated by a little rod up here and this this didn't have it on this they just tittled the fuel on this and flooded it so that's it. I'll, no, I'm happy that's in one piece. There you can see the new o rings in place, and you can see by the o ring sticks proud quite a long way. So that's got a lot, quite a big tolerance um, for sealing against the, the, uh, the head, the inlet manifold. So I'm quite happy that's going to work. So I'll strip it down now, give it a, a good clean on the outside, pretty it up, but um, I'm pretty sure that'll work now. So that's cost me up to the mount £4.50 and I'm quite sure that'll work now. Okay, bye.